English Grammar Lesson Twenty Seven. Topic: Gerunds and Infinitives. I love Halloween, not just October thirty-first, but before that too. I enjoy preparing for Halloween. I like buying decorations and putting them up, and I like to make my own decorations. I made these little ghosts with my children. Last year, my son dressed up as a robot. I made that costume. This year, he is going to use a store-bought costume. However, my daughter wants to be a firefighter, and I've promised to turn her stroller into a fire engine. I'm going to use these boxes and somehow turn all of this into a fire engine. Let's first talk about how we form gerunds and infinitives. Here are two sentences from my opening talk. Look at the first. I enjoy preparing for Halloween. Can you identify the gerund? It's here, preparing. We form the gerund by adding ing to the base form of a verb. Prepare, preparing. And of course, we follow common spelling rules. For example, a silent e is dropped before we add ing. In my opening talk, I also used these gerunds: buying, pudding. Now look at the second sentence: I like to make my own decorations. Can you identify the infinitive? It's here to make. We form an infinitive by combining to plus a base verb. To make to make. Another infinitive you heard me use was to turn. Now that you know how to form a gerund and infinitive, let's talk about how we use them. Gerunds and infinitives can have different roles, different functions in sentences. In this lesson, we'll focus on how we use gerunds and infinitives as objects of verbs, also known as direct objects. In our example sentences, we saw gerunds and infinitives as direct objects: enjoy preparing, like to make. Gerunds and infinitives can appear all by themselves as the direct object, the object of a verb, but they can also appear in a larger phrase. In our first sentence, we don't simply have preparing, but preparing for Halloween. So the object of the verb is not just a gerund, but a gerund phrase. In our second sentence, we have the infinitive to make. But the object of like is not simply to make, but to make my own decorations, an infinitive phrase. So the object of a verb can be a gerund or a gerund phrase, or an infinitive or an infinitive phrase. At this point, you might ask, well, can any verb that takes an object be followed by a gerund or infinitive? Let's try this quick exercise to answer that question. Let's read the sentence and then try to change it. For example, I enjoy preparing for Halloween. Could we also say I enjoy to prepare for Halloween? No. Look at the second sentence. I like to make my own decorations. Could I also say I like making my own decorations? Yes. Third sentence. I've promised to turn her stroller into a fire engine. Could I say I've promised turning her stroller into a fire engine? No. So we see that some verbs can only be followed by a gerund, some can only be followed by an infinitive, but others could be followed by either. To summarize, when we talk about verbs that take an object, we have three groups. In group one, verbs can only be followed by a gerund. 
Example, enjoy. Enjoy preparing. In group two, verbs are only followed by an infinitive. For example, promise. Promise to turn. In group three, verbs can be followed by either a gerund or an infinitive. Example, like. Like making, like to make. I wish I could tell you that there was a shortcut, an easy way to learn which verb goes in which group, but the truth is it's a matter of study, it's a matter of practice. You just need to become familiar with the verb and the grammar it requires. In this lesson I'll give you practice with group three, verbs that can be followed by either a gerund or an infinitive. This is a special group because it breaks down further. Some of these verbs have no difference in meaning when you choose a gerund or an infinitive. For example, I like eating Halloween candy. I like to eat Halloween candy. There's no difference in meaning. But with other verbs there is a difference and you have to choose carefully. If you choose a gerund, there's one meaning. If you choose an infinitive, there's another. There aren't too many verbs with that difference in meaning but there are several. Right now we're going to study the changes in meaning with try, stop, forget, and remember. In the past I always used pumpkin from a can when I made pumpkin pie. This year when I make my pie I'll try using fresh pumpkin. You heard me say, I'll try using fresh pumpkin. That means I'm going to test this new recipe out. I'm going to experiment and see if it works. I'll try using fresh pumpkin instead of pumpkin from a can. My son brought this pumpkin home from a school field trip to a farm. Pretty soon it will be time to turn this pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. My son is still small, so of course I will help him when he tries to carve his first pumpkin. You heard me say that I'll help my son when he tries to carve his first pumpkin. In other words, this year for the first time he wants to attempt to carve his first pumpkin. And I'll help him when he tries to do that make that attempt. Don't tell my children. This is where I keep candy. The other day I bought some typical Halloween candy. Candy corn. And since I bought this candy, I can't stop eating it. You heard me say that I can't stop eating this candy. In other words, I find it difficult to quit eating. I want to continue eating, eating, and eating. <laughs> I've been working all morning. I'm going to stop to have a cup of tea now. You heard me say, I'm going to stop to have a cup of tea. But first I said, I've been working all morning. In other words, I planned to quit working so that I could have a cup of tea. I quit the first activity in order to start another, drinking tea, and then possibly I'll go back to working. These are my children's candy holders for trick-or-treating. I remember going trick-or-treating as a little girl, and you know what? I had candy holders just like these. You heard me say, I remember going trick-or-treating. In other words, as a grown woman now, I have the memory of going trick-or-treating as a little girl. The memory is still with me. I remember going.
Probably the most important event on Halloween is trick-or-treating. That's why it's good I remembered to buy Halloween candy. If you remember to do something, then you didn't forget to do it. You did it. I said I remembered to buy Halloween candy. In other words, I did not forget to buy Halloween candy. Understand? When I got out the box of Halloween decorations this year, I found this bat. I don't remember buying this bat. How could I forget buying such a cool decoration? <laughs> if I forget buying a decoration, I no longer have the memory of doing that action. I don't remember actually buying the decoration. I asked, how could I forget buying such a cool decoration? forget buying. Halloween is just around the corner. Don't forget to buy your Halloween candy <laughs> and some decorations. If someone forgot to buy candy, it means the person did not remember. So if I want you to remember to buy candy, I tell you, don't forget don't forget to buy candy. Let's try an exercise. Exercise 1. Choose either a gerund or an infinitive to complete the sentence. Number 1. I tried identifying to identify all the neighborhood children in their costumes, but it wasn't easy. Some were wearing masks that covered their faces. Which is correct, identifying or to identify? Answer, to identify. I tried to identify the children. I attempted to identify them. Two. Please don't forget taking, to take, a picture of the children in their costumes, the grandmother asked. Answer, to take. Please don't forget to take a picture. In other words, she's asking, please remember, please remember to do this. Don't forget, don't forget to take a picture. Three. While walking home from school, the boy stopped looking to look at the scarecrow in the neighbor's front yard. He smiled at its funny face and clothes. Answer, to look. He stopped to look, so he quit walking in order to take a look. 4. I don't remember seeing to see little Joey among the children who came to our house. Did he go trick-or-treating this year? Answer, seeing. I don't remember seeing, meaning I don't have the memory of Joey coming to our house. If he did, I forgot about this. I don't remember seeing. Exercise 2. Complete the sentences with your own ideas. 1. Have you ever tried eating a familiar food in a strange new way? You can begin your answer this way. I once tried eating. 2. During the day, everyone must take a short break from working or studying. When did you rest today, and what did you do? Three, look at old photos of yourself in an album. What are some things that you've forgotten? Four, which big holiday is coming up next? What do you have to do to prepare for it?
Additional practice for this lesson is available at EnglishCafe.com. Follow the direct link listed in the video description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy studies. And happy Halloween!